Hey, it is me, Kayvon, your favorite half Persian, half Scottish, half white face comedian. I got a question for you. Why are leftists so addicted to blackface? Now, we all know the left pretends they're not racist, but when you get down to it, the reason they're always trying to point out who the racist is, is because it's them. Their leader, Joe Biden, thinks very little of black people. I mean, you got the first sort of mainstream African-American yeah. who is articulate and bright and, and, and clean and nice-looking guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, that's a storybook, man. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. It don't have nothing to do with Trump. But when you go down the line to all their entertainers, all their TV hosts, all their comedians, they are all racist according to their standards. Just look at blackface. Now, blackface is an actual thing. It is something that used to be done in a minstrel show back in the late 1800s, maybe the early 1900s, but it was really a comical thing and people would paint their face and really mock black people. That's not to say that if you put some tanning lotion on your face and go as your favorite singer and dancer, Michael Jackson, circa 1985, <laughs> that you're a racist. Actual blackface is an actual thing. Now, if that is still racist in the year 2000 and beyond, then why did Sarah Silverman do it? Or Howard Stern? Big time leftist, but also a racist according to his own party's standards. How about Ted Danson, who went in full blackface just as a joke. Of course, when they do it, it's always just a joke. Anyone else, well, you're a racist and you must be kicked off the island, but it's okay as long as you're on the left. Even Whoopi Goldberg signed off when Ted Danson did it. Didn't call him racist, didn't pretend she was offended, because the secret is nobody really is offended. It's just a power play to get rid of people they already want to get rid of. Now, if you want to talk about cultural appropriation, nobody does that more than Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, you didn't know? Her real name is Karen Elaine Johnson. When it was time to be a comedian, she was such a hack that she wanted to pick a funny name so people would know she's funny. And the funniest thing she could think of is Whoopi Cushion. So her name was Whoopi Cushion for the first year as she was a comedian. Then her grandmother said, Whoopi, you are an idiot. That's the dumbest name I've ever heard of. Pick a name that will get you further in Hollywood. No one's going to hire no whoopee cushion. And her grandma suggested she give herself a Jewish last name so people would accidentally see her name on a list and book her for TV roles and movies. So culturally appropriating a last name to get further in her career. She kept the whoopee, added the Goldberg. The more you Joe. Oh, man. Now, of course, entertainers can always just pretend, hey, we were just having fun, we were doing a parody, we're not really racist, we just like blackface. Okay, but what about Governor Ralph Northam from Virginia? Bombshell involving Virginia's Governor Ralph Northam. An old yearbook of Northam's turned up late today with this racist picture on the page. Just a short time ago tonight, the governor issued an apology in which he said he has no plans to resign. Listen to this. I cannot change the decisions I made, nor can I undo the harm my behavior caused then and today. But I accept responsibility for my past actions, and I am ready to do the hard work of regaining your trust. Governor Northam admitted he was in a yearbook photo in 1984 that showed a figure of a guy in blackface and another guy in a KKK hood. Now, after admitting it and apologizing, he later backed off and said, actually, no, that wasn't me. The governor of Virginia defiant today, saying he will not resign after claiming a picture in a Ku Klux Klan costume and in blackface was not him. Well, who knew that besides blackface being donned by the governor as a medical student, uh, he owed a debt to African-American culture, especially the Caribbean side. He obviously is sampling Shaggy. It wasn't me. And it worked. His radical left constituents did not ask him to step down. Do you think they would have done the same if they'd found an old yearbook photo of a Republican in blackface or KKK hood? <laughs> Different rules for the left. Speaking of racist attire, Dave Chappelle wore a KKK outfit on his hit show. Nobody cared because he's black. 
So it's just a way of taking reparations and allowing one group to profit and make money and laughs off of a joke, but forbidding another one from stepping into that ring. How would you feel if you found out the truth? Dave Chappelle didn't even write that sketch. It was written by a white Jewish guy. So what we have here is a leftist white Jewish guy can write a KKK sketch as long as he finds a black actor to play the part and <laughs> giggle in the background. Now a whole industry crops up deciding whether or not this is okay. And then we can hire more black and gay guys to go on TV and say whether they were offended or not on behalf of the rest of the American people like these guys. <laughs> Chris Rock is finally addressing the controversy around Jimmy Fallon doing an impersonation of him in blackface on SNL. And he knows Jimmy doesn't have a racist bone in his body. Chris says, I'm friends with Jimmy. Jimmy's a great guy and he didn't mean anything. A lot of people want to say intention doesn't matter, but it does. I don't think Jimmy Fallon intended to hurt me and he didn't. Oh, what are they talking about? I forgot, media darling Jimmy Fallon, the highest paid host of late night television did Blackface. Now, me personally, I think he did a character of the great Chris Rock. Rock, now we're talking. Where is he? Man, oh man, read this book. <laughs> I've seen who wants to be a millionaire, and guess what? Not a lot of black folks on the show. Right. <laughs> Not a lot of black folks on the show. Know why? Because black folks don't like to answer questions. <laughs> oh, they want to be millionaires, but you got to ask that kind of question like, in 1981, how many grams of crack did Rick James smoke when he recorded Super Freak? <laughs> and I think it's hilarious, but I'm not a leftist. By leftist standards, Jimmy Fallon should be immediately fired from his position. Oh, but it's okay because Chris Rock said he wasn't offended when Jimmy Fallon did it, and it's because Chris Rock wouldn't have been offended no matter who did it, but he would have pretended he was offended if someone he didn't like did it. Are you seeing the logic of the left? Uh, so are you surprised that Chris Rock didn't have an issue with Hilaria? No, you know, I mean, listen, uh, do I think blackface is awful? Yes. Um, do I right. think that it doesn't really matter the intention of it, like it was an awful thing, yes. But also, Chris Rock and Jimmy Fallon are friends and have been friends for years, so I would actually find it weird if um, Chris Rock were to all of a sudden drag his friend in this interview, you know? And be like, I hate you, Jimmy Fallon. Like, you shouldn't have done this, that was racist. <laughs> like, I feel like maybe that's what some people would have wanted to hear. Now, Jimmy Fallon was laughing all the way to the bank when he did the sketch, but now 20 years later, he has to pretend like he was deeply hurt doing it and didn't think it was a good idea at the time, and he deeply regrets it. Look at this piss-poor apology, further breeding paranoia and mistrust between the races. Instead of saying, I'm not apologizing, I thought it was funny, and I love Chris Rock. Look at this whimpering fool. Here is Jimmy's apology on The Tonight Show back in June. And I realized that I can't not say I'm horrified and I'm sorry and I'm embarrassed. The thing that haunted me the most was how do I say I love this person? I respect this guy more than I respect most humans. I'm not a racist. I don't feel this way. And now cue the black and gay guys to tell you why it's okay. So this is what I call hidden reparations, where you fire the people you don't like and you give jobs and opportunities to people that you think have been hurt. The problem is, nobody's really recognizing this as reparations, so they still think they deserve more. This is reparations. You're getting jobs, you're taking down people you don't like and giving the jobs to other people that you do based on politics. This is it. The truth is actors over the course of history have always done impressions of people they liked. That's why it's not racist. The left doesn't know that. But leftist, here's someone you need to go after if you're following your fake rules. Whether it be Kimmel or Fallon or anybody else who's sort of been caught up in all of this and with old videos, that people haven't paid too, too much attention of the classic Billy Crystal skits with Sammy Davis Jr. Right. Because those were those were legendary and, you know, and they would do them together. Billy Crystal, who played Sammy Davis Jr. I just want to say what a guess it is to be here with you the ultimate cat. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't too crazy about the color of the house, but that's mean, a whole other thing. The, the White House. Yeah. Uh, 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 oh, man, I'm killing me. 
How about another late night TV show host? Now, according to leftist standards, who's the next biggest racist offender? None other than Stephen Colbert, or as I call him, Stephen Sobor, because he wrote a sketch with Dana Carvey and Steve Carell that was the most racist sketch leftists have ever seen. Now, people watching it might have thought it was funny, but according to Stephen Colbert's current woke standards, he needs to be canceled for what he's done. That was Gregory Peck for possibly the most racist uh, sketch ever committed to tape. He helped write a sketch where someone pretended to be Japanese that wasn't Japanese, pretended to be Indian, that's Steve Carell with a horrible Indian accent. You probably never saw it because they're trying to hide it from you. Enjoy it now. Saj Patel for... I win! Mean, I win! Mean, I don't win! Really I don't win! Really Bone shatteringly... I want to take Ching Chang, Ning Nong, Ling Dong, and Rex Harrison! Inescapable. <laughs> Career-endingly racist. Now. At the time, it was just good, clean fun. Man, we put the pedal down and went for it. See how it's just so tongue in cheek and charming when they remember, oh, that's how it was, but uh, we're not racist. You know we're not racist, right? <laughs> now, there's nothing worse than acting like another race, is there? Well, there is one thing worse. It's if you act in real life like you're another race. Rachel Dolezal was fired for being the head of the NAACP in Spokane, Washington, but she wasn't really black. She just put tanner all over her skin, crinkled her hair, and got found out. In her defense, she was the blackest person in Spokane, but that's not the point. She was gone. However, Sean King, who is also not black, which is why they call him Talcum X, is white, however, looks kind of black, and because he fights so hard for the radical left, they let him pretend for popularity. And now the left is confused what to do about this guy in England who loves Korean culture so much that he's doing surgery all over his British face to look Korean. That cultural appropriation that exceeds Whoopi Goldberg is pretending like someone that you're not really that big a deal. Doesn't seem to be for Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin's face doesn't look like that. His color isn't like that. And his hair isn't like that. So either he's just acting and we can all laugh about it or by leftist standards, he needs to be fired. Which is it? I'm getting so confused with your rules. And if you're saying, no, Kayvon, that's okay. They're the same color naturally so they can just tease each other. Well, then what about his wife? I bet you didn't know this. Alec Baldwin's wife pretended to be from Spain for 20 years. Everyone knew she was from Boston. Her family knew, but she did this thing with an accent and oh, how do you say? Couldn't remember English words and she's from España and she just got all of this from watching old J-Lo and Serena music videos. Check it out. We have very few ingredients. We have tomatoes. We have, um, a, how do you say it? Cucumber? Cucumbers. We have um, red pepper. We have Hilaria, or Hilaria, Hillary, whatever we're calling her, Baldwin, breaking her silence on accusations that she faked her Spanish heritage for years. I want her to speak in Spanish. Is for Spanish? Spanish too. Let's, let's do it first together. We're just going to do what we do. Okay? No, no, do it in Spanish. <laughs> I mean, do don't, don't. We're going to do what we do together. Do you what, know what I mean? My wife will, will literally say lately, in, in order to, to express the kind of sentiment of having a fifth child, she'll literally say to me, she'll go, Alec, I feel that someone is missing. 35 or 40 of my family members come from Spain, which equals really good party. <laughs> really good party. We Yesterday, and we're trying to all pronounce your name. It's not Hilaria. It's not it's Hilaria. Not, it's not even Hila Hilaria. There is no H. There's no H. So, so pretend there's no H. It's okay. Hilaria. It's like hola. Yeah. In Spanish, you say hola. It's H-O-L-A. Nobody says hola, unless you have a really bad accent. <laughs> Alex? <laughs> Alex? <laughs> Why didn't anybody in her family, as they would have done in my family, told her years ago, what's with the accent? What the hell are you doing? In, in October, I think we're going to go to España to see my family. Oh, he's you're going to bring him to Spain. The, he's never... Well, we brought Spain to him for the wedding, but now he's got to go to Spain. Oh, he's, he's uh -huh. You're going to kiss me on the cheek and tell me you love me that I'm taking you back to Spain. Uh -huh. Ay, ay, ay. There was no pleasing uh -huh. you. Always been a Zara fan. It's, you know, it is a Spanish brand. And um, so I've known about it since for very, very, very long time before I was in this country. I have four kids, but you have to be able to treat each one as if they were only child sometimes. So I have to have my individual time with each. 
You know, it feels different. It really feels different. But I didn't think it was going to be different, but it feels quite different. What's so. the thing that surprised you the most? Dean reported Ilaria, who was born in Spain, has made certain to raise her children with her native language, Spanish. But newly unearthed photos show Ilaria as a high school student at the swanky Cambridge School in Weston, Massachusetts. And this tweeted yearbook page identifies Ilaria by her birth name, Hillary Hayward Thomas, at a high school performance. I knew her as Hillary Hayward Thomas, and she didn't have a Spanish accent, goes another tweet. It's all bull, screams the New York Post front page with a cheeky illustration of Ilaria as a Spanish matador. Okay, I can't wait to see you. That's going to be great. Fantastic. What time? 12 o'clock? My wife is from Spain. Mm -hmm. And she said, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And blah, blah, blah. I don't mean to be racist when I put that accent on there, by the way. I, when I was 20, I gave up dairy. And so in Spain, you eat a lot of dairy. Mm. Um, you eat a, there is a lot of meat. Um, so I, I think there is a bit of a shift, but yes, it is, it is much more typical of the diet there than it is, for example, in this country. Montauk, he said that was as close as he could get to Spain, to my family, and to Rome, because we really like Rome as well. It is a blonde, and it's blue eyes, and Luthia is brown here. This is Luthia? Yeah. And she said, you, you hold Edu, and I'm going to be Luthia. Hello, hello, Edu. We'll go, go. Alec, don't do that to him. Right. You scare him. <laughs> going to kick your culo. He's going to kick my culo. Um, how do you say it? Cucumber? Cucumber. And my wife says to me, oh, I want to have maybe one more Alec. We have one girl. And I say, I hope you and your next husband are very happy. <laughs> like, look at my skin color. And look at your skin color. Who's dark? Yeah. Is one of us better than the other one? Mm-mm. No. Like, look at my skin color. And look at your skin color. Who's dark? Yeah. Is one of us better than the other one? Mm -mm. No. Now, Alec Baldwin knew all this. He's married to the woman. Her family is all from Boston. But he played along, lying to the American people, going on TV, making fun of a Spanish accent for his own personal gain. According to your standards, shouldn't he be fired, tarred, feathered? and be called a racist Hitler Nazi all day, like you call everyone else? Or take it to the next level. Believe all women, treat women with respect. No one is more disrespectful than Alec Baldwin. Listen how he talks to his own daughter in a voicemail message, and how he threatens her, and how he tells her she's gonna be punished. Hey, I wanna tell you something, okay? And I wanna leave a message for you right now, because again, it's 10.30 here in New York on a Wednesday, and once again, I made an ass of myself trying to get to a phone to call you at a specific time. When the time comes for me to make the phone call, I stop whatever I'm doing and I go and I make that phone call. And you don't even have that goddamn phone turned on. I want you to know something, okay? Uh, I'm tired of playing this game with you. You have insulted me for the last time. You have insulted me. You don't have the brains or the decency as a human being. I don't give a damn that you're 12 years old or 11 years old or that you're a child or that your mother is a thoughtless pain in the ass who doesn't care about what you do as far as I'm concerned. You have humiliated me for the last time with this phone. I'm going to fly out there for the day just to straighten you out on this issue. I'm going to let you know just how disappointed in you I am and how angry I am with you that you've done this to me again. You've made me feel like shit and you've made me feel like a fool over and over and over great again. And this crap you pull on me with this goddamn phone situation, I am going to get on a plane and I'm going to come out there for the day and I'm going to straighten your ass out when I see you. Do you understand me? I'm going to really make sure you get it. Then I'm going to get on a plane, I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to come home. So I'm going to let you know just how I feel about what a rude little pig you really are. You are a rude, thoughtless little pig, okay? To be played. But of course, there was no support for Alec Baldwin's daughter because Alec Baldwin is willing to make fun of Donald Trump so he gets to stay on Mount Rushmore for the radical left and no one will call him a dirty name. He is a useful idiot.
I hope we dispelled the myth that dressing up like another culture for the purpose of acting, Halloween, or a comedy sketch is racist. It isn't blackface. That was an actual thing. It's an impression. However, if you are still convinced it's racist, then I have some racist for you to go and cancel right now. Leftist, get your pitchforks, get your protest signs, and protest Jimmy Kimmel, the other late night host offender. According to you, he dressed in blackface and not only that, mocked a black southern man's voice, none other than Karl Malone. Night, Karl Malone look up in sky and say, <laughs> What the hell going on up there? The UFO live on other planet, phoning home like E.T.? Come along, read on TV about white people getting deducted by aliens, sticking all kind of hell up their butt. And that's a damn thing. Now, Come along never seen no flying saucer himself, but if he do, that's going to be a spooky time. That's why Karl Malone say government got to step up and give 102% to keeping them little green man off this here earth. Because the day them dudes stick something up Karl Malone but that's going to, well, that ain't going to be no good time for nobody. Especially Karl Malone but Listen up, E.T. You better stay the hell back. Nanu, nanu. Until next time. This year, Paul Malone. While you're at it, leftists, be sure to cancel Justin Dildo, the Prime Minister of Canada. He dresses in blackface, Indian face, Chinese face. The guy likes to dress up and mock every other culture at every single party, even if a costume wasn't necessary. What about Sir Ben Kingsley? Why did he dress like Gandhi? Cancel him! Robert Downey Jr. making excuses why it's okay for him, because we all know he's not racist, to dress in blackface and do a black scent for a whole movie. Which, by the way, was very funny, but I'm not a leftist. And let's not forget, it goes both ways. We have plenty of black people who dress like white people for costumes, Halloween, or comedic effect. And it's very funny. The movie White Chicks, are we out to cancel the Waynes Brothers? Oh no, Kayvon, because racism can only go one direction. How about it's not racist either direction? Is Roy Wood Jr. ready to be canceled for dressing like Donald Trump? After all, he's not a white billionaire with orange hair. No, Democrats would cry if you canceled a black person like Leslie Jones for dressing like Donald Trump. Now, she looks incredibly scary dressed like that, and I'm crying just looking at her. And what about this dork from SNL, AKA sorry, not laughing? Come on, Keenan, don't be so racist. And what do we do with this Chinese guy? After all, he's China's top Donald Trump impersonator. Is he racist too? The reality is none of these are racist and we're not gonna stop being racist until we let it go and start having fun with each other's cultures, personalities, and quirks. Me doing an impression of Michael Jackson, Prince, Michael Jordan, Mike Tyson. It doesn't mean you hate them. It means you're finding what's funny about them and trying to make light of it. And that is unity. That is equality. And until you drop it, you're the racist. If you like my video, you like my message, I have 500 more comedy clips on youtube.com slash caveoncomedy. I also have a website where you can book me for stand-up comedy shows and private events, www.kvon.tv. The best way to help me is just share my videos, show up to a show live, I would love to meet you, or make a one-time donation, throw a tip in the tip jar on gofundme.com slash caveoncomedy. Venmo at KVON-KVON, Locals, or Cash App. That's not racist. Welcome to the show, I'm Megan Kelly, and I have to give you a fair warning. I'm a little fired up over Halloween costumes this morning. Have you seen it? I mean, truly, political correctness has gone amok. There are strict rules on what you may and may not wear issued by someone who thinks they're the boss of you. Isn't the whole purpose of Halloween to dress up and pretend you are something other than yourself. <laughs> Listen, 
But, well, what, but what, what is racist? Because look, because so truly, you do get in trouble if you are a white person who puts on yes, black face yes. for Halloween, or a black person who puts on white face yes. for Halloween. Like I, that, okay, back when I was a kid, that was okay as long as you were dressing up as like a character. Yeah, if somebody that, feels like something is offensive to them, then you should say it, and that's fair game. Yeah, and and I, you should be able also, to take it if you're going to dress up like yeah, that. Yeah, you got to be able to take it. Yeah. One of the things they mentioned is people dressing up like Nazis, and this. If you think it's offensive, it probably yeah. is. Yep. yep. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Megan Kelly, and I want to begin with two words. I'm sorry. You may have heard that yesterday we had a discussion here about political correctness and Halloween costumes. And that conversation turned to whether it is ever okay for a person of one race to dress up as another. A black person making their face lighter or a white person making theirs darker to make a costume complete. I defended the idea saying as long as it, as it was respectful and part of a Halloween costume, it seemed okay. Well, I was wrong, and I am sorry. 